Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, March 23rd. I hope you all had a safe weekend. I hope you're all healthy. Your family and friends are still healthy. Um, I hope you stayed in the house most of the weekend, as boring as that might be for now. Um, that is how we're all gonna stay safe. Um, so I hope you are finding some activities around the house to keep you busy. Um, and it is Monday, so back to your school week. Um, again, Ms. Cromarty, the rest of your teachers and I are trying to keep things as normal as possible. So um, we're back to your regular school week. We'll have your regular amount of work that you typically have in the school week. Um, yeah, hoping that everyone who is waiting on Chromebooks has those um, by now. Um, I'm also hoping that everyone who was waiting on Wi-Fi also has that by now. Um, if you do not have a Chromebook or Wi-Fi, please call me today. Um, my phone number is in the directions on Google Classroom, um, and I'll also say it right here, 617-545-5046. So again, if you do not have a Chromebook or Wi-Fi at this point, please call me today so we can get that figured out. Um, all of the video issues should be fixed. I'm no longer posting them directly onto Google Classroom. Um, I'm posting them to YouTube and then onto Google Classroom, and that's been helping. So you can still access the videos through Google Classroom, and I also posted the link to um, my YouTube page on there on Thursday or Friday as well. Um, Everyone should be logging on daily and turning in by midnight. Uh, we gave you guys a couple of extra days to hear this information from your teachers, your uh, parents, your uh, friends, um, if you weren't in school on Monday, to hear it directly from us teachers. But now it's been a week, so uh, for sure you should be logging on every single day and turning in every single day. Again, these assignments are graded. Um, we're treating this just like regular school weeks. Um, I think that is it. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, so please grab your notebook. If you don't have a notebook, grab a piece of paper that you're going to keep safe. Again, you're going to be turning in these do nows and notes to Ms. Cromarty and I when you come back to school. Grab a pencil or something to write with and grab your Dragon Wings book. If you were in school on Monday and you were able to take a Dragon Wings book home, please grab that. If you were not in school last Monday, uh, the Dragon Wings readings are attached to this assignment on Google Classroom, so you can open those. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Our word today is solemn. Solemn means sad and serious. Our example sentence for today is, I did not know what to do or say. The company looked so stern and solemn. And one thing I noticed on Friday was that my hand is moving more than I realize it is, no matter how hard I try to be still. So I'm going to have you pause the video right now and do this do now instead of me holding it up for the four minutes. I was holding it up for the four minutes before because again I'm trying to keep things as normal as possible for all of you and I thought that maybe it was helpful for me to talk through the word with you and pretend to give dojo points but um, like I said I was noticing that my hand isn't as steady as I would like it to be. So at this time, go ahead and pause the video. 
and finish your do now because I'm gonna put this piece of paper down and move on to notes. Thank you for your understanding. Awesome. So, um, just quickly before we move on, solemn is a tier two word, so that means that um, it's a word that is a little bit more advanced than our most basic words in um, the English language and in maybe like everyday conversation, um, but it is a word that can be used across many different contexts, uh, many different subject areas, many different parts of life. Um, so it's a word that you definitely want to remember and try to start to use if you can. So instead of saying that um, the coronavirus outbreak is a sad time, you could say that the coronavirus outbreak is a solemn time because it's not only a sad time, it's also a very serious time. So that would be a more like sophisticated way of um, describing this time period that we're going through right now. Um, you could also describe yourself as solemn. Um, you know, if, you know, when all of this is said and done and on April 27th, you come back to school, you could say, you know, Ms. Mari, I'm feeling solemn today because it was really hard for me to get out of bed and come to school today. Um, so those are two more examples of how you would use that word solemn. Um, and again, I encourage you to try to use it um, today instead of using the word sad or serious. Awesome. So now we're going to move on to notes. So you should still have that notebook or piece of paper. You should still have that pencil or something to write with. And these are our notes today. There are a lot, but they're all very important. So please make sure that you get them all written down. So we've been using claim evidence and reasoning all year, but especially over the past week on our assignments. And one thing that Ms. Cromartie and I have noticed is that a lot of you are forgetting to introduce your evidence. So even on classwork, even when it's not a test, we still want you trying your very best. And using CER the best way you know how. And we've gone over this before, this is review, but you need to start using this every time you do CER. So how and when to introduce evidence? Well, we know that we do our evidence after the claim, that's the when, but how do we introduce it? Well, you need a sentence starter in the text it says or according to the text. And then after your evidence, you need to tell me what page you got it from so that I don't, and Ms. Cromartie doesn't have to look through the whole chapter to try to figure out where you got that from. Some pieces of evidence you use are really important, key events from the text, so it's easier to find those pieces of evidence than others. But sometimes when you use one that might not be the most relevant piece of evidence, it's hard for us to find it if you don't put the page number. And as a reminder, your evidence should not be long. Evidence should be one sentence from the text. If you think you want to use more than one sentence from a text, then that would be a second piece of evidence but your one piece of evidence is one sentence. Again, I'm gonna ask you to pause this video so that you can finish the notes so that my hand's not shaking or moving anything out of the screen. All right. Awesome. So, uh, that being said, 
I'm going to have you go ahead and open up today's activity because it's more of like a stop and jot activity. So while we're reading, we're actually going to be stopping and answering some questions. So your activity is attached to this assignment on Google Classroom. It says Chapter 5, Text Dependent Questions. should look like that. All right, so everyone should have that at this point. And so I'm going to actually read the directions to this before I start reading the book. Because, like I said, it's a stop and jot activity, so we're going to be um, stopping while we're reading and answering questions. So it says, Chapter 5, Text-Dependent Questions. Directions. Read the pages indicated below for each question. Answer each question in two to three sentences with a strong piece of evidence from the text. So that means you need at least your claim sentence and your evidence sentence. There's your two sentences. Question one, read pages 98 to 100, then stop and answer the following question. What does Moonshadow say is Black Dog's real problem? What does Black Dog do that shows that Moonshadow is correct? Awesome. So by reading that question, it reminded me of where we left off at the end of chapter four. I remember at the end of chapter four, um, the company was really nervous about where Black Dog was. He had been gone for 10 days, which was the longest he had ever been away from home. Um, and as mentioned before, he is addicted to opium, which is a drug. And so they were really worried that um, he may be um, was in trouble or had died or something. So the company all splits up and Wind Rider really doesn't want Moonshadow to go with him, but Moonshadow's like, you have no choice. I'm gonna go with you. You're my father. I'm supposed to protect you. Mom said, well, I'm over here. I need to protect you. So Wind Rider gives in and lets Moonshadow go with him and they end up finding Black Dog and he is, um, you know, really messed up on the drugs um, and doesn't want to go home, but he's so messed up that when Ryder is able to give him a nice little punch and that knocks him out real quick and um, they uh, carry Black Dog back to the company. So that is where we leave off at the end of chapter four. So. Go ahead and open up your books to page, should be page 98. Yep, page 98. And again, if you don't have your book, the readings are attached to this Google Classroom assignment. So again, we're reading pages 98 to 100 and then we're stopping and jotting. When we stop and jot, we're stopping and jotting about what Moonshadow says is Black Dog's real problem and what Black Dog does to show Moonshadow this. All right, page 98. Just getting comfortable. Page 98, Chapter 5. Wind Rider's Claws, February 1904 to May 1905. Later at the company, Uncle sat for a long time, figuring things on his abaxcus. The beads clacked as his fingers flew back and forth. Through the ceiling, we could hear Black Dog snoring upstairs. The money can be made up out of my share, Uncle said. Don't be an old fool, Father said. There's not just the matter of the woman to be made up. There's the justices to be paid off. No, Whiskey Devil. He's the head of the justices. Owes me a favor from a long time ago. It won't cost that much. Still, White Deer said, it ought to come out of all of our shares. We can write it up to expenses. He's my son, Uncle said sternly. I'm responsible for him. Page 99. Money, 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 Hanclap said disgustedly. Who cares about the money or where it comes from? The point is that any one of us could be a dopey and sleeping upstairs. Lefty massaged his right arm. Hanclap is right. And it would not have to be just dope. 
It could be gambling for me or any one of a thousand different traps that a tame man could fall into in this demon's land. Put it to a vote, White Deer said. All those in favor of sharing the cost put up your hands. He and Handclap put up their hands. You're both fools, Uncle began. Think of your families. They do, old man, Father said. That's why they're here. But this is their family, too. Now will you get talking to your justices? Uncle slammed his abascus down on the table. Who can talk to fools, he grumbled, but there was a pleased look in his eye. As soon as Black Dog had recovered, he promised to reform. He sounded as if he meant it, but then he always did. Handclap told me later. Black Dog kept his promise for a time. Pale and shaky, he moved about the laundry working as hard as any of us. But after a while, he began to get snappish again and to sneer at things. Page 100. It was his way. I think he had lived so long in this land of the demons that his mind had become poisoned and he had begun to think like a demon and to despise the tame people around him. Maybe when he had first begun to take dope, he had just meant to get away from his conflicts. But after a while, taking dope had become an end in itself. Now, quite a few of the older Tang people used opium. Everybody, including Father, would have an occasional pellet, but that was the way they might have a drink or gamble at the tables. But there were certain individuals who had gone over the edge, who knew no moderation. Opium for Black Dog was what gambling had been for Lefty, but Lefty had stopped, more or less, at least compared to his old days. Black Dog's real problem was his inability to control himself. Finally, one month after we had brought him back, he disappeared, and on the next day, when he came back, we smelled opium's strange sweet smell, like roasted peanuts, clinging to Black Dog's clothes, and we knew where he had been. So right there at the end of page 100 was our answer. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to go back to number one. I'm going to reread it to make sure that I found the answer. So again, number one said read pages 98 to 100. I did that, so I'm going to put a check above that. Then stop. I'm doing that, so I'm going to put a check above stop. And answer the following question. What does Moonshadow say is Black Dog's real problem? So those exact words were said towards the end of page 100. So if I look one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lines from the bottom of the page. It gives me the exact answer. It says Black Dog's real problem was his inability to control himself. So first I'm going to put that in my own words for the claim, and then I'm going to use that um, evidence for, I'm going to use that sentence for the evidence. So. What does Moonshadow say is Black Dog's real problem? Moonshadow, again, complete sentence. Moonshadow says Black Dog's real problem is that he cannot control himself. So before I give my piece of evidence, I just want to read that second question in um, number one. There's two questions, and so we need to answer both of them in two to three sentences. So the second question says, what does Black Dog do that shows that Moonshadow is correct, that he can't control himself? So right after that sentence that says Black Dog's real problem was his inability to control himself, it says why, why Moonshadow thinks that. Finally, one month after we had brought him back, he disappeared. And on the next day when he came back, we smelled opium's strange sweet smell. So Moonshadow says that Black Dog can't control himself because just a month after this big fiasco, this big issue, he went and left and did the opium again. So, Black Dog, I'm writing this down, 
shows moon shadow. that he cannot control himself. By leaving the company to do opium again. I apologize. I ran out of space. Let me put my book down so I can hold it as close as possible. Sorry, it's kind of unorganized. I ran out of space. I can rewrite it on the back of this worksheet if need be. So you can go ahead and pause the video if you need to keep writing that down. I'm just going to write it on the back of this sheet just to be a little bit more neat and because we still have one more sentence, which is our evidence. Okay, this should be a little bit better for y'all. All right, so again, Moon Shadow says Black Dog's real problem is that he cannot control himself. Black Dog shows Moon Shadow that he cannot control himself by leaving the company to do opium again. If you're not finished writing that down, you can go ahead and pause. So our last sentence again is um, the evidence. And if I look back to our notes from today, I know that I need to work on introducing my evidence. So I'm going to use the phrase from our notes today that says, in the text it says. So in the text it says. And I think I'm going to use um, the piece of evidence about after one month he disappeared. So in the text it says, finally, one month after we had brought... him back, he disappeared. And again, I'm gonna look back to my notes, make sure I have everything. My evidence doesn't have to be long, perfect. It was one sentence. Oh, I need the page number. So page number is 100, and I just put that in parentheses just like this. So that piece of evidence shows that Black Dog could not control himself, and he left home again.
If you're not finished, go ahead and pause this video and keep writing it down. For the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and continue. So because I did that first one with you, um, numbers 2, 3, and 4, you're going to do um, on your own today. So I'm just going to go ahead and circle those 2, 3, and 4. So 1 we did together, 2, 3, and 4 you're going to do on your own. Um, and the rest of the worksheet we're actually going to finish tomorrow because this is a really long chapter and um, a lot of questions. So again, um, like I said, we're trying to keep the minutes of ELA as close as possible to a regular school day. So we're giving you a little less than 60 minutes of work per day because that's what you would normally have in school. Um, so if you did this whole worksheet, it would definitely be more than 60 minutes. So we split it up for today and tomorrow. So we just did one together. You're doing two, three, and four after we get off this video. Now, it is supposed to be stop and jotting. So I'm going to um, read. I'll even read the questions, and I'm just going to remind you that, you know, hey, you should be pausing the video right now to answer this question, all right? But then I'm going to continue reading. So you should pause whenever I say, hey, pause the video and answer this question, all right? So we were at the bottom of page 100, and before we continue reading, I'm going to read question two to you. Question two says, Read pages 101 to 103. <coughs> Excuse me. Read pages 101 to 103, then stop and answer the following question. Black Dog uses a story to explain how men came to have opium. What does Black Dog say opium, or the flower, does for men? So it sounds like Black Dog's going to come maybe back to the company on pages 101 to 103 and explain to, I'm assuming Moonshadow, since Moonshadow is the narrator, it sounds like he's probably going to explain to Moonshadow um, how and why men started using opium. All right, so I will remind you to answer that question when I'm done uh, reading the end of page 103. Right now I'm at the bottom of page 100. When I had been in the demon's country for over two years, Uncle sent me to make the rounds among some of our regular customers in the Tang People's Town to collect overdue bills. Page 101. As he said, even by demon reckoning, it took two figures to write my age, for I was eleven by our system of counting and ten by theirs. I had been collecting money for a month when I saw a black dog lounging in a doorway, staring at the May rain. What are you doing here? I asked. I had to take a walk and get some fresh air. He stared up at the sky with a frown and pulled his collar up about his neck. The rain ran down the brim of his hat, splattering on his shoulders. But it's a miserable day. I guess, I said. I have the small canvas bag of money under my loose shirt. Going back to the company? Why not? Black Dog shrugged. He fell into step beside me, and we walked up the hill in silence. Black Dog folded his arms across his chest, almost hugging himself. Don't you, don't you hate it here? I don't like it, if that's what you mean. But White Deer says that hate is a strong word and that I ought to use it only for evil. But there's another way to forget evil, Black Dog said, page 102. We stopped for a moment in a doorway when the rain fell harder. Did you ever hear about how we got opium? He asked finally. The British demons forced us to let them sell it in the Middle Kingdom, I said. Ah, that's what some people say who want to hide the truth, because they don't want to give the poor man his due. He was a poor working man like you or me, who, no matter how hard he worked, always wound up owing more and more to the bosses. The only thing he owned outright was his ugly wife, maybe the ugliest woman alive. She was so repulsive that he beat her in the morning when he got up, and beat her in the evening when he came home. The wife never complained because she loved him dearly. But finally, when she saw how much he hated her, 
she fell ill because she was so sad. On her deathbed, she called her husband to her and told him that after her death, he would realize how much she loved him despite everything he had done to her. At once, the poor farmer felt sorry for what he had done, but before he could tell her, she died. Ten days later, the poor farmer noticed a strange white flower growing from her grave. There was a little round fruit inside the flower. Page 103. At first, the poor farmer was afraid that his wife had turned into some poisonous flower. He could not sleep at night thinking about the flower and what he had done to his wife. He could not work during the day, remembering the blows he had given her. She has every right to hurt me, the poor farmer said, for I have been a mean, spiteful man. With that, he fell sick himself, but he had no money to pay the doctors, nor any offspring to take care for him. And then, one night, during a feverish dream, he saw his wife. She told him that the flower on her grave had been woven from the strands of her soul. The strange fruit in the flower could heal him. He was to cut the fruit and harden the juice that would come out and smoke it. If he smoked it every day, he would become healthy. The very next morning, he got up and did as his wife had told him. And no sooner did he take his first puff than he felt his illness leave him. So it was that he and his wife were closer in death than they were in life. Black Dog smiled ironically. So it is to those two lovers that I smoke, for the name of the ugly wife was life, and the name of the farmer was every man. The only good thing I ever got out of my ugly life was the flower. So right now you should be pausing this video and stopping and jotting for question two. Again, question two said, read pages 101 to 103. We did that. Then stop. We're doing that right now and answer the following question. Black Dog uses a story to explain how men came to have opium. What does Black Dog say opium or the flower does for men? As a reminder, you need at least two sentences, one being your claim and one being your evidence. Make sure you get your evidence from the pages that we just read. All right, so again, you should be pausing this video because I'm going to go ahead and move on with the reading. So question three says read pages 104 to 107, then stop and answer the following question. What does Black Dog do to Boon Shadow and what is the company's response? So I guess Black Dog is going to physically do something to Boon Shadow, it sounds like. And the company is going to have some sort of response to it. So I'm at the top of page 104. Please follow along. I did not understand his story at all. But life isn't all ugly, I said. Don't you think it's ugly here? What kind of lives do we lead with our wives and families? There's no money back home. But why sacrifice yourself just so others can get fat at home? All they ever understand is that they need more money. Things will be better in the next life. Maybe we'll be born as the sons of noble families. Maybe we'll even find, finally find release from this world. Black Dog looked at me intently. Why shouldn't we get some pleasure in this life? Why later? Why not now? Because we don't owe things just to ourselves. There are others. He grabbed me by the arm and his voice grew wild. Don't give me your simpering, mealy-mouthed answers. We've repaid our debts a dozen times over. You're hurting me, I said. All the time in my mind, I was telling myself that I must not be frightened. I must not be frightened. You don't know what pain is, Black Dog said. Wait till you have been here for 30 years. Then you'll welcome the pain. They were once as pleasant to me as they are to you. Page 105. He twisted my arm. I let out a yell. I kicked him hard in the knee, and he let go of me with a grunt. I began to run up the hill. My hat flew off. I kept on running. I heard his boots come closer as he followed me. Suddenly, I felt a pain in the back of my head. He had grabbed my cue. I stopped short as he jerked at the cue and fell on my back. He tore the money bag away from me, but he did not even look at it. Pain, he said strangely. Pain? You don't know what it is. And he began to kick me with his heavy boots. When I came to, I was back in the company. Father was pressing a wet towel against my forehead anxiously. He's awake, he said. The rest of the company crowded around me. What beast did this to you, boy? Lefty asked. 
I found that I was not even mad at Black Dog. How could you be mad at some dumb, pain-goaded animal? I did not know what to do or say. The company looked so stern and solemn. But Uncle took it out of my hands. Was it Black Dog? He demanded. I did not say anything. Was it? Uncle asked. Page 106. Yes, I said reluctantly. I'll cut off his head and throw it into the gutter where the dogs could eat it, Uncle said. How can you curse your own son that way? White Deer scolded him. He's no son of mine, Uncle declared. Father turned heavily in his seat. That's good to know. Then you'll let me take care of him. I should have let you or any one of a dozen men take care of him a long time ago. He's not a man. He's an animal, Uncle said. You won't do any such thing, Windrider, White Deer said. Black Dog is a member of the company. Kick him out, Uncle said. We'll put it to a vote, White Deer said. I say bring him to the police and let them handle it. Bring him to the demon police, Uncle asked. Yes, the demon police, Lefty said. Handclap nodded. Otherwise, White Deer reasoned, you'll have to take it up with the sleepers. They're not about to let anyone go around beating up one of their brothers without their permission, no matter what he's done. The justices were going to shoot Black Dog, Father pointed out. Page 107. They asked the sleepers. You ought to know that, Lefty said, and the sleepers only gave their permission because they didn't want a war with the justices. I'll go to the sleepers myself, Uncle said grimly. They won't refuse me permission. No. Father let out his breath in a rush. No, I'm sick of having to deal with thieves and pimps and pushers. I'm sick of having to scrape and batter men who live off the misery of their brothers and sisters. Now, now, white dear suit, there are many good men in their brotherhoods who earn their money as we do and who don't deal with those things. It's only a small number who are criminals. But father whirled around to face white dear. Don't you see? We're all tainted by it. As long as we keep quiet and let it go on, we're as bad as they are. It eats at them. It eats at us. The others were silent. Father might have slapped each one of them in the face. He should have kept his mouth shut then, but the dragoness in him would not let him. He had to speak his mind. We mustn't play their games any more by their rules. They are our brothers, Uncle said, no matter how bad. That's why we don't go to the demon police. And we're going to pause. And answer number three. Read pages 104 to 107. Check. We did that. Then stop. Check. We're doing that right now. And answer the following question. What does Black Dog do to Moonshadow? And what is the company's response? So one thing I will say is that different members of the company are having different responses. So some members think they should do one thing. Some members think they should do another thing. So please make sure that you mention all of the types of responses that the company is having. So this answer might be closer to three or four sentences long, which is okay. Again, you're going to pause this video so that you can stop and jot that answer. And for the sake of time, I'm going to move on to number four. So number four says, read pages 108 to 109, then stop and answer the following question. What is Windrider's reason for wanting to go after Black Dog himself? What is Windrider's connection to the sleepers? So it sounds like Windrider is not going to give it up. He wants to get even with Black Dog, which sounds like probably beating him up or worse. Um, but I guess there's some sort of connection that Windrider has to the sleepers that might make this even more personal. So we're going to find that out on pages 108 to 109. So I'm at the top of page 108. Please follow along. We Tang people take care of our own affairs. It's better that way. Remember the virtues of the stranger, the lonely man in foreign lands. Be silent, be cunning, be invisible. Besides, what's the use of going to the demons? The sleepers can afford to pay more bribes to the police than we can. The demons will just listen to our complaint and then file it away. Better to go to the sleepers themselves. If you won't go to the demons, there's only one other way to make sure that justice is done, Father said, and that's to do it myself. There was something about his posture and the look of his eye that reminded me of dragons. All the others in the room could feel it, too. Then I realized that to be a dragon meant more than just taking an interest in the magic of machines. It was also to live by the spirit of dragons, and Father felt that no dragon would let such an act go unpunished. 
Dragons, father went on, protect their own brood. Dragons, 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 always that nonsense, uncle said impatiently. I think he instantly regretted his words, for father's mouth hardened at that. Page 109. Father sat back in his chair. It creaked under the shift of weight. When I was there on the beach in the dragon kingdom, it was more real a time than this. Don't kill yourself for a foolish dream, uncle insisted. He would not have said such cruel things normally, but he was worried about father. And besides, you promised. He glanced at me and was quiet. What promise? I asked. It was a long time before father spoke. He folded his hands and looked at them while he talked. You do many strange things when you're young, and maybe the strangest thing you do is join a secret society that says it's dedicated to throwing out the Manchus. You enlist. You act as a soldier for the future of the Middle Kingdom. And then you realize that though they make a lot of patriotic speeches, at heart they're only criminals. And did you do that? I once was a sleeper, Father said. The others left our room shortly after that. But we no sooner had turned off the gaslight and leaned down than we heard a bump at the door. Father got up and opened it to see Lefty sitting in the hallway facing our door. The hallway was so narrow that though Lefty had his back against the wall, he had to draw his knees up toward his chest. By his left side, he had a club. And we're going to pause there for today. So again, question four is your last question for today. You'll finish the rest of the activity tomorrow. It says, read pages 108 to 109. Check, we just did that. Then stop. Check, we're doing that right now. And answer the following question. What is Windrider's reason for wanting to go after Black Dog himself? What is Windrider's connection to the sleepers? So you're finding those answers on pages 108 to 109. When you're done finding those answers, um, you're not turning in today's assignment because um, you need to access it tomorrow as well, okay? Um, that being said, um, go ahead and pause this video and you can listen to um, the rest of it when you're finished with number four. Um, I will see you again tomorrow. Um, make sure that you log on to Math Google Classroom, Science Google Classroom, Social Studies Google Classroom. It's a new week. You're going to have new assignments in all of your classes. Um, and again, most of your classes are expecting you to do work daily, just like school. So you probably have um, more than just this assignment due today. So uh, make sure that you log on to all your other Google Classrooms. Please make sure that you're reaching out to your teachers with any questions. Um, Google Classroom comments are the best way. Second best way is email. And third best way is calling or texting us. Um, most of us will have our phones and computers with us most of the day. Um, and that is it for now. Um, again, please reach out with questions. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay in your house. Um, if you're looking for things to do, um, you can comment um, or email me and I can find some educational things for you to do or some non-educational things. Um, but I don't want you sitting around bored. Um, so please reach out if you are looking for things to do. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your family. I will see you tomorrow. Bye.